wonder if the things that we think are going to make us happy now that we say, oh, we hope they have that in heaven, are even going to matter to us when we're in heaven. Like, you know, if, we, if we're in heaven, we think back of our these lists and think, well, I was really, look what I got now. I was really stupid to think that was going to bring me any level of happiness. Okay. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, and that's an interesting point. And, you know, let's talk about that for a second because generally, uh, when we when we bring that when we, when we start thinking that way, really what we're doing is is we're kind of heading back to where, what Craig was talking about, where okay heaven's going to be this never-ending sing-along, and we feel lousy about it because we don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we so it's it's kind of along the same lines. It's the idea being that in our present state. We really can't imagine how great it's going to be, and so if we try to imagine it at all, we're just going to kind of embarrass ourselves when it's all over, well, because we're going to miss it. Well, let's just say we're going to miss it. Okay. That's okay. We're going to miss it, but uh, I don't know, I remember who said it. You know, when Jesus said, Behold, I make all things new. Some commentator who I, kills me, I don't remember his name, because it's one of the most profound things I've probably read in the last two or three years. He said, notice, Jesus did not say, I'm going to make all new things. He didn't say, I'm going to make all new things. He said, I'm going to make all things new. And ultimately, at the, the, the greater framework of our discussion here on, he uh, on the subject of heaven is that when God created Eden... He didn't mess up. He created something that was wonderful and that was perfect. Now, sin entered the world, and the curse of sin is on creation now. But that does not mean that God is giving up on the Eden dream. The Eden dream is going to come back in the new heaven and the new earth. And ultimately, that's what we're going to be looking at. But we're going to look at the fact that, that as we discuss heaven, we're going to be thinking of it in physical terms. Because God created us to be physical beings. And when we're in heaven, we're going to have physical bodies. The new heaven and the new earth is going to be a physical place. And we're going to look at the scriptures to understand that. I think... I think heaven is going to be much more... I mean, what's wrong with the way God made us now? If you could, if you could take out the, the element of sin, death and decay, all of that stuff, which is not part of what God brought to creation, what's, what's wrong with the rest of it? To me, it's not a question of what's wrong with it. It's our ability to see through it. Mm -hmm. You know, so much of what we've done here is, is really looking for relief from suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, suffering in itself, I don't think you, if it wasn't for sin, we wouldn't understand suffering. Because suffering is really the absence of perfect joy. And when we experience God in perfect joy, these things aren't going to, we're not going to really relate to them the same way because we're not going to understand it the same way. So seeing through that, getting past that, I think is part of the challenge. Okay, maybe. I don't know if I agree with you or not, but I don't mind just saying <laughs> we'll see. That's why. That's why we do this. Because and, and please, I'm not standing up here uh, with my camera, uh, suggesting that I am the authority on him. I am the uh, conversation starter. Okay. And uh, so we'll we will all see where we end up. Where does cancer fit into what you just said? What cancer is that a result of somebody's sin? Uh, you mean, I, I think it's it's the result of the curse. Is it the result of, uh, and is, is cancer a, a particular punishment on a particular individual? It can be. I mean, Scripture talks about how God would use sickness to punish. But then at other times, he, the, 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 exact, the exact opposite was true. I mean, this Jesus talked about someone who, or, or one of the disciples, I can remember, maybe it was Acts who talks about someone, uh, so actually the Pharisees came to him and said, Jesus or whoever they were talking to, you know, is this man 
blind or whatever he was. Boy, I'm winging this yeah. one. Because of what, something he did or something his parents did, right? Because their whole mindset was if something bad's happening happened to you, it's because there's a sin right around there somewhere. And the answer was, no, this was to glorify God. And then the person was healed. So there's, there's not going to be one answer to that question. But in terms of heaven, we know it's not, it won't be there because we won't be under the curse. Uh, I need to get in some, some scripture here real quick. We're doing pretty good time-wise. But I've mentioned Paul and his uh, relationship with heaven. Philippians 1, I don't have that. You can jot this down if you want. Philippians 1, 21. It says, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Verse 23, I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. So, so Paul's uh, idea, his concept of heaven was such that it was better by far for him to go and to be there. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 6 says, We are always confident to know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. Verse 8 says, We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. All right, so in the next few weeks, our, our goal is to be more comfortable with the idea and, and, and really fall in love with heaven as our home. Really fall in love with heaven as our home. Now, some people, you know, there's that old saying, you're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Well, we're not, that's not going to be a problem for us. That's, that's not going to be a problem because, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I want to talk about Satan in relation to heaven. Satan does not want you to love heaven. He absolutely doesn't. And I believe that a lot of the misconceptions and mistruths that we may be carrying around with us are the result of Satan actively trying to keep you from a fuller understanding of what God is doing. I mean, look back at your list. For those of you that had trouble writing down five things that you hope because you just can't even imagine that the things that you like are the things that God intends for you to like. That's, that's the work of hell. I, I absolutely believe that. Because Satan does not intend for you to understand how good your father is. Revelation 13, 6 says, He, being Satan, opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name and his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. Right? That is one of the active works of Satan, is, bla is the blaspheming of God and of his children and of his dwelling place of heaven. So that is something that Satan actively is at work doing. And he attacks you by trying to lie to you about what heaven is all about. 